Hey guys, it's been quite a while. A lot has been happening, but also really not that much. In this video, I want to show you the day before, the day of, and some days after my surgery. I'm still not recovered. It's quite a lot, so buckle up. Guys, I'm walking to my last ortho appointment. Pre-op. I cannot believe it. Also, I have no eyebrows. Well, this is my natural eyebrow color, but... Last year, I went back to get my teeth straightened out a little bit more, but the orthodontist actually told me, no, you need a jaw surgery to correct your overbite. So, here we are. Um, absolute. Yeah. <laughs> when you think you just got adjusted to having the braces in your mouth, you get these hooks on your braces, which feels just as awful as getting them for the first time. Hmm. Usually they'll tell you a few weeks in advance, at least before you get the surgery, but they only told me one week before, so I had to cancel all of my summer plans. But at least in that week, I tried to eat as much of my favorite foods as possible. My last day of normal food. Because you'll be on a liquid diet for a couple of weeks. Guys, I'm actually so... I'm so tired, but I have so much to do. I'm currently just working a little bit from the luxury of my garden. I'm super grateful that I'm gonna be in recovery in my parents' house, actually. Oh my god, I didn't even tell you, I moved back. Amsterdam housing market is something else. Yeah, I'm super tired. But I guess after the anesthesia, I'll, I'll be catching up on sleep, I guess. Look at the hooks that they put on my braces. Like, what the fuck? What is that? Oh. Whoops. Also, I got dumped like two days ago, right before my surgery. Yeah. Yeah, guys. One week he's buying you flowers, the next. <laughs> Honestly, I can only laugh about it. Call me cold, call me heartless, but. I don't like to waste my energy on anything that's just over, you know. Life goes on, it's for the better. It's definitely, definitely for the better. I'm actually glad he ended it because I should have. And I did, like last year I did end it. And for some reason this year I was more optimistic, but I already knew last year. Anyways, I'm being very real here. I'm trying to think of where I want to have my last dinner today. My very last normal dinner before I'm going to have to inject everything into my mouth because after the surgery my jaw will be completely shut for a couple weeks. This is usually what happens but for some reason they didn't have to do it for my surgery so lucky me. So fun. So fun. at the desk said she had the same surgery and she recovered super fast so she was like you're gonna be fine in no time but the thing is i'm getting the surgery way sooner than expected so i'm gonna have to have my braces afterwards longer i guess i was like oh maybe i only need to have the braces for like three more months but then they said girl it could be more than a year honestly i'm not complaining i'm super grateful that I'm able to have this and it's insured mostly. Also, I found out I have to take my nail polish off for the anesthesia thingy, which is so sad because I was like, the only thing that can be pretty about me is my hands and I'm gonna be looking at my hands all the time. So I at least wanna have cute nails, but too bad. I'll paint them when I get home. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on with work. Just found out we have to be at the hospital at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Why? Why me? I'm getting more and more nervous to be fair. I'm just gonna pick up my, um, I'm just gonna go by my grandparents to pick something up. On my bike key. I think 
think they do not fear me because they're in a garden. Hello! Hello, Dilicia! for you. Opa die heeft er nog wel een, een, een aantal. Then I went to pick up Bessie for our last dinner. <laughs> we went to Lowlander Botanical Bar, which is one of my favorites. In the future, I'll try to name the places I go a little bit more often because you guys always ask and I always forget. So, the football game was on, but of course we didn't really watch. We had too much to catch up on. And we ended the night with a nice little walk in the park. Guys, now I'm getting scared. I'm kind of procrastinating actually going to sleep because then it's the next morning and then everything's happening. I took off my nail polish and I took off all my earrings. So I feel I've never felt more naked. And I'm using these pimple patches for the first time because my PMS acne was pretty bad. But something I also forgot to tell you my fucking period came back after five years so now i'm starting my second cycle which is great because it's like actually back back i think i'll elaborate more on this in the future but it's like a whole different topic rabbit hole but it's important to talk about so i will <sighs> yeah i'm just gonna make a list of the things that i shouldn't forget tomorrow and then just try to sleep because I have to wake up at 6? Why so early? Why? My god, why? Guys, see you tomorrow. Jesus. Good music ook nog. Ja, sorry hoor. Hier. Ook nog good music op de radio. I wasn't that nervous that morning. I just think the tiredness and the hunger overpowered any other emotion. My mom was for sure way more nervous than I was. Sometimes I looked at her and I thought she was gonna cry. We arrived to the hospital a little bit too early because somebody gave us the wrong information. My mom just left and I'm gonna have to wait here for hours by myself. And I got these cute little avatar thingies. But it's okay, I had some spare time, so I basically just took the longest, nicest nap ever in that hospital bed. It made me realize that my bed at home is not that comfortable if your hospital bed is already so much better. Anyways, the surgery. Let me talk about it while I show you some very charming footage of me trying to eat after the surgery. It was quite something so when they came to pick me up they actually left me sitting on the bed and they wheeled me to the right department and i thought it was so silly because i was completely healthy i was fully able to walk so i felt super silly being in this hospital bed being driven around so i think a combination of this and the nerves and just uh, i don't know the what the fuck factor of it all made me in such a weird mood. I couldn't stop laughing. They must have thought I was crazy or having a manic episode, which I might have had. Anyways, they drove me to the place where they would put the IV into my arm. And I swear to God, I've had 20 people say to me in the hospital, oh my freaking God, your hands are freezing. Because they put me in this paper little dress. The hospital was super cold. I couldn't eat anything. I was super tired. My body was going into hibernation. So when they would put the IV into my arm, they couldn't find a vein. And this is actually the only part that I really found a bit scary they tried to put it in my arm and i was i was i was laughing like hysterically but at this point i was also crying at the same time because i wondered if it should hurt this much because they put it like a little bit higher into my arm and it hurt so much and they were struggling so they had to pull it out again and then put it into my arm again some nurses try to distract me as they would with anyone else by asking me some random questions and they started talking about well they asked me what i studied and everything but that 
honest to God, is the last thing I ever want to talk about. Oh, interesting. You chose Scandinavian studies. Why? Girl, don't ask me this. Ask me anything. Don't ask me why I learned Danish. Anyways, this is so besides the point. But you get the gist. I went into the operation room and this is something that I did not expect. I expected them to put me under first and then drive me into the operation room. So the operation room, honestly, it freaked me out a little bit. Seeing where I would be, I don't know, cut open. And in there also laughing and crying and I was gonna pass out and they were like, well, don't worry, you're in a freaking hospital. And then it all happened very quickly. They told me, okay, now think of beautiful things. And they didn't even give me a second to think of anything beautiful. They just put the mask on. And I was like, like, give me a second. The only thing that I could think of was a meadow. So I was thinking, meadow, 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 hold on to it. Because I don't want to twirl into a nightmare, you know. And then I woke up. The absolute millisecond that I opened my eyes, they were there with me. And they were asking me questions. And they gave me some ice cream. And I was just like, let me be for a second. But they just want to get you up and running. Make sure that you're okay. Then they wheeled me to a room with two other men. And... One of the guys was on the phone to his wife and he told her, yeah, yeah, I'm in this room with two other guys. And I was like, excuse me, excuse me, I'm a female. Anyways, then my family came to visit, which was nice, but I couldn't really talk to them or interact with them that much. But it was nice that they were there for a second. It was not me to hold. Thank God my mom had brought me some smoothies because this little dessert is all they gave me at the hospital and I was starving. And little trigger warning. I think the worst thing was just my mouth being filled up with slime and blood all the time. It was so, so gross. I'm so sorry. I have to show you this. I didn't really, but anyways. And here I am seeing my swollen head for the first time after a surgery in the mirror. I had seen it on the phone, but it was quite a shock, but at this point I could still laugh about it. Oh my god. In the following days, it did get a little bit more challenging, I have to say. A large part of my face was numb, and I have to say, one month post-surgery, it still is right now. I just can't feel my under lip. Like half of my tongue. I don't want to ask for a new ice pack, but I don't know if I'm gonna get it. I don't look so bad like this before I take it off. Shrek. I would say my hospital stay was pretty easy because I was just so tired that I could sleep through most of it day and night. So I just took naps, listened to podcasts and I slept almost all through the night. This is what they gave me for breakfast in the morning but pretty quickly me and my mom went to Albert Heijn. I did get a lot of stairs but I just wanted to pick out everything liquid that looked appetizing to me. My first week recovering at home pretty much looked like wake up, breakfast, take a nap, lunch, take a nap, dinner, take a nap, and then have a full night's sleep because eating took me so long and I was completely exhausted so I just slept day and night basically. I think after one or two days I decided to go on my first longer walk with my mom which was super nice. It was really windy but it's really important to get moving as quickly as possible, to feel stronger, more energized and to get rid of the swelling as quick as possible. I've learned that it really varies person by person how quickly you get rid of the swelling. For me the process was pretty slow. This is me after one week and I would still wake up with blood all over my mouth. It was pretty gross and I was quite disappointed here because I hoped that after one week it would be a little bit better. So I just got rid of the ice pack and started wearing this scarf to feel a little bit more normal. 
guys, it's been one week and I'm getting my stitches out. And I'm still super swollen. I will show you later. And I can barely talk, so. This is also the day that I finally handed in my thesis after one month of extension. So this means I'm going to be graduating, which is so exciting. And I'm going to be starting my master's in September. Anyways, I have so much more footage of me rambling with a very swollen face, but I'm not going to include everything because then this video would be one hour and it's not that interesting at all. But if you have any questions, please shoot them right at me in the comments. I will respond to everything or I can talk about some other stuff in my next video. Okay, guys, it is the next day. I am insanely low on happy hormones. I just feel like I'm spiraling into very much sadness and um it's because i've been self-isolating and i will see my friends soon i just felt like i wasn't i'm not like any fun to hang with right now and talking is so so difficult but i'm gonna go out and do some stuff after the first week, I slowly started doing everything I was usually doing and after one month, I am completely back to my normal routine and normal life. I'm not done with the braces, of course, but I so far can say that the surgery was worth it for me. Every experience is highly personal, but this is just how I feel. I have in fact resorted to the forest. And it's nice. But there's so many planes. My last piece of advice is don't underestimate how mentally challenging it will be. Make sure you have some nice support around you and you got this if you're gonna do the surgery. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Love you so much. Bye. Mwah.